In today's Photoshop lesson, we want to take a color photo and convert it to black and white, but then bring back part of the photo in color. So let's get started. We're going to go to File, Open, and I'm going to shift double click on this, and that pops it right in the Photoshop without stopping at ACR. Here's our image. The easiest way to make it black and white, I think, is to add an adjustment layer, which we would click right here. We got the groups, the first th three are in one group. The next group is down here, and that has to do with brightness and of the image. And the third group has to do with the color of the image, and we want the black and white. So we'll click on the black and white. Instantly, we have a black and white photo. Now we do have some adjustments here. If you want to, you can play with the presets. If I click here, you can see there's a blue filter. If I use the down arrow key, I can actually scroll through the filters. And as I scroll through the filters, I get different examples. Oh, here's the infrared. Now the infrared is... Uh, who needs an infrared camera? We have the infrared filter right here in Photoshop. As I continue to scroll, I get a couple other choices. So if any of those look good, you're good to go with those. If you want to, you can let Photoshop figure out what it thinks the best black and white would be. and We could just click on the auto. And there's a rendition that Photoshop thinks is good. If we'd like to tint the photo, we can also do that. We can hit the tint button and it brings up a colored tint. Click on the box, we can actually adjust the brightness of the tint and the color. So here it would be in blue. If we click over in this area, it lessens the brightness of the blue. And of course you could go other colors too. But we don't need any of that for now, so let's leave that off. Oh, and there's one thing we should mention is we can move the sliders. That would change the colors in the photos. As I move the red sliders to the right, everything red gets brighter. As I move it to the left, everything red gets darker. That would work for the other colors too. I'm going to hit Control Z and that puts it back where it was. Um, if I was to do the cyans, same thing. Everything cyan gets brighter or darker. So you can kind of fine tune it the way you want. There's another thing you can do and click and use the finger. If the finger has the box around it, like it does here, um, it's ready to be select something. So if I go up to the sky, I can notice that I can drag it to the right after the finger pops up and it's actually moving that cyan color brighter and darker depending on which way I move it. If I go down here to the grass it's going to move the green. Nope. It's going to move the yellow. Look the yellow slider is moving just by having the finger selected. If the finger is not selected it kind of looks like this. There's no box around it and here it is selected. Now, if you get it messed up and you're not sure what you got, you can always click on this down pointed loopy arrow thing at the bottom and that puts it back to the default. So let's just use that for these demonstration purposes. And let me reduce the size of this box so we have a little more room. Now that we got our adjustment layer here, the black and white adjustment layer, all we have to do is get a brush and paint on the mask. I'm going to hit B for brush. That brought the brush up, and I'm going to need a black brush, so I just click on this, and now I have a black brush, and I need 100% flow and opacity, and then I'm going to reduce the size of the brush, and let's just start with Dave, and I can actually paint on Dave, but I'm really kind of painting on the mask, so as I paint in Dave here, I'm actually bringing back the color. Okay. Now if you look over here on the mask, you see we got some black on the mask. Um, if I went out of the lines anywhere, let's see, let me zoom in on Dave a little bit. Yep, see this little, if I change the color to white, and I make the brush a little smaller, I can actually paint back the black and white area. So any areas that you go out of the lines, you can paint back in, kind of erase it back. Okay, and if you want to get really technical, you might have to paint the area right in here with black. No, make it white. There, 
Now that makes it official. Let's see if we missed any a day. But I'll alt click on the mask. Oh yeah, we missed plenty. So, and this area, these are this area of the white in the middle is area that I didn't really paint. So that didn't get changed. So, it's, then we'll click on this again, and we'll back where we were. Now, is that the only way to do it? No, we could. There's other ways to do it. We can do it with a selection. So let's use the selection method. I'll show you how to do that. We'll hit the W for the quick selection and I'll get a brush and I'll start with Roxanne and I'll scroll through and there we go. We got most of her. Now we do got some stuff we don't want. We don't want this background and we don't need this tree behind her head. So I held the Alt key down and painted that out the opposite way. So I'm getting her legs now. Other leg and we got the same problem. I'll hold an alt key down, we get the minus sign on the cursor, and we'll paint that out. We'll get in between here. We don't want this to be in color. And I think there's a little pants there. Okay. So that's good. Now what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna pause the video and I'll actually continue doing this and get Dave and myself. So I'm gonna pause. Okay. I'm back. I just spent a minute or two and went ahead and quick selected Dave and myself. Now I did have a little problem. I'm going to hold the Z key down to zoom in on this area right here. Uh, the quick selection tool had a little problem getting these shoes. So what I'm going to do instead, I'll use the lasso tool. So I'll top, tap the L key. That'll give me the lasso tool. I'm going to hold the shift key down. By holding the shift key down, I'm telling Photoshop to add this selection to what I already had. So as you can see, I'm taking the lasso tool and I'm going around and I'm selecting that foot. That should be good enough. You can see it had a little trouble over here, so why don't I just go ahead and get this one too. I've still got that shift key down. If you look close, there's a plus on the cursor. That means I'm adding to the selection. There we go. Now I'll hit Control Zero and everybody selected. What I'll do to the selection to make it a little smoother is I'll go to Refine Edge. I'll click on Smooth. Maybe about this far should do it. That'll kind of smooth out the humps and the bumps and make it a little better selection. There we go. Now when we use the mask, when we paint on the mask with the brush tool, I'm going to hit B for brush. So I got a brush. I need a black brush. There it is, black. And I'm on the mask. I'm at 100%. And I'll make a bigger brush. I'll hit the right bracket key, make the brush a little bigger. Now as I paint over, I can go outside the lines because only the stuff inside the line will actually be painted. Everything outside the line is not selected and it will not be part of what I'm going to paint. So this way I can be as sloppy as I want. And as I paint over these figures, only the stuff inside the selection will be sel will be painted. Now, if you look over on the mask, you can see that I've made that selection. Filled it in. I think that's pretty good. Now, what I want to do is get rid of the selection, so I can just go to select and then hit deselect. So there's our image. I'll hit the tab key. There's our image, a black and white image with some color. And I'm going to hit tap the tap tab key again. And all we basically did was add this layer mask and paint with black if we wanted the color to actually come through. For instance, over on the grass, as I paint with grass, it puts a hole in the mask and allows the layer below to come through. If I didn't like that, I could paint it with white and I could actually erase the anything. So I can go both ways. Did I hurt the original? Nope, there it is. We still have the original. So that's one way to get color and black and white in the same photo. Thanks for watching. I sure hope you learned something.